All right. Welcome to Creating Great Dove Culture Through Error Budgets. My name is Sal Kimmick, and we're going to try to take you through this as quick as possible. Today, what we're covering are the who, what, where, why, and when of site reliability engineering. We're really going to focus on when and why we want to implement error budgets in our workspaces and organizations, and who can be really helped by that process put in place. So first, let's talk about SRE. Generally, what is it? I like to define it as a verb. I really like Ben Trainer's definition as well as SRE being what happens when a software engineer is tasked with what used to be called operations. So for a couple of examples of what this might look like in practice, what can you look for when you're trying to see an SRE in the wild? And I put it this way because they're not always those who are labeled explicitly SREs. Often they can be doing this in their workplaces under other titles. So there is the more traditional model of having a distributed SRE. These act essentially as consultants for the reliability of your system across your entire enterprise. What we are beginning to see more often what I would encourage to see in workplaces are embedded SREs. These are generally within teams and they're very hands-on. They're changing the code configurations. They're implementing and scaling the SRE. You can have infrastructure. These are SREs that are explicitly working on the CICD and the monitoring of those systems. You can also have tools-driven SREs. These are a little bit more like the distributed ones in that they help to make sure that the monitoring is in place so that the developers can make the choices around how they are improving their SRE. A little bit more around the context that we're working with. So many of you who are listening to this talk today are probably right in the middle of what you would consider a digital transformation if you're trying to understand SRE in practice. That's pretty common experience. About 64% of the respondents from 2019's SRE report said even with that formal title and that formal practice in place, most institutions had only had SRE in practice for three years or less. But from that sample, about 41% of them did say that they believed that SRE was fundamentally the same and part of a DevOps team, or at least complementary to it. And about a third of them either didn't know or viewed it as competitive too. So I really align with the two thirds here that think that it should be fundamentally part of the DevOps experience. And I think I can explain to that last third why they should be using it. One of the alarming things that I did find out of this last report was that while a lot of SREs did have some good practices in place, only about a third reported actually having error budgets. And that's a little concerning. Error budgets are really the bread and butter of doing SRE as a full practice. And it really gives you a superpower. Because I work in the real world, I do some consulting and I work with a lot of businesses that are really in the thick of starting this digital transformation. And when they come to me starting to look at doing SRE, it's because they're having problems like this. They'll tell me it's like when things go down, I'm walking to a war room and I don't know who to point the finger at. And on the other side, my developers will tell me, honestly, our back end is held together by tape and bandages right now. We need the time to be able to to make sure our system is hardened. So what can we do to abstract from that and to stop having conversations around what went wrong and who's responsible and to flip the conversation about how can we build a system that is just good enough that our users enjoy the experience they're having? So error budgets are simply the amount of error that a service can accumulate over a specified period of time before users grumble about the experience that they're having. We're able now to flip to that kind of thinking because of some of the foundational beliefs that we have from working in DevOps for so long. The first is that we understand the bigger the silos, the more lines of code are needed to review in order to solve a bug. Inversely to that, the smaller the changes that you make in a CI/CD fashion, the faster things are to fix or to roll back in a panic. And third, gradual and meaningful change is the goal of working in CI/CD. But that's kind of the cultural difference between DevOps and SRE. In DevOps, we know now how to make meaningful, uh, gradual change, but SRE is the practice of understanding an organization when we're making changes that are meaningful. 
So when I do get asked, and I do get asked often, isn't SRE just better monitoring and automation? It absolutely isn't. It's going to be a full culture shift in your organization, if not simply because of Conway's law. Any organization that designs a system will produce a design whose structure is a copy of the organization's communication structure. So as you're shifting to monitoring automation and putting the health of your services at the center of your communications, this is going to become increasingly centered to your business strategy, making your customers central, making the experience of your users fundamentally a pillar of your business strategy. And it allows you to really observe the reality of the user experience because of the words, the statistics, and the ways that you're evaluating your service availability. Everything that we do in SRE really functions on a timeline. Um, and it's about building trust both within our systems and within our teams around when is the right time to do innovation and when is the right time to step back and to have some curative or preventative strategies for making sure that your next push of scalability really goes well. A few definitional understandings we will need to go through. A service level indicator is really the base level, the building block around which we'll be working. It's a simple statement that says X should be true. Now, you can take a service level indicator and can turn it into an objective by extending that statement and saying X should be true, Y amount of time. And a service level agreement is really any legal binding or uh, contractual binding that you've put around your SLIs and your SLOs. We won't be talking about SLAs any further today simply because if you do your error budgeting and your service level objectives well, You'll never hit the. Uh, you'll never hit your agreement, and you're in a pretty comfortable place to just keep thinking as a developer. What can we build that's interesting and useful to our user? So, if we have a service level objective in place, and our key example here being an SLO of maybe ninety nine point nine five availability, how can I then turn that very simply into an error budget? Now, the error budget is just the inverse of the SLO, I'm making it being from an abstract percentage value to something that can be tied to real time with the burn rate. Now, so if I have an SLO of 99.95, my error budget for that and the thing that I can see running down in time over the course of a month is that I have 21 minutes and 54 seconds in 28 calendar days, let's say, of that service not being fully available because before we've defined it as being a problem. So if you have your SLIs, your SLOs, and your error budgets in place, that means that you're in an excellent place where you've automated, you're now monitoring. The important part is to now take that as a practice and to continuously evolve. SRE is an iterative process. And let's go through these four steps. So the first is to tell a story with composite SLOs. Make sure that you have two or more SLOs from different services that represent an end-to-end -end product view. This is usually in the best places to always start are availability and latency of your systems. You can have these as read reports. You can have these as visualized dashboards. I'm agnostic in this talk to the toolings that you should that you should use, but I am not agnostic to this. You should really simplify the ones that you want to choose to begin with. And with simple or a few, one uh, like two to five SLOs in place as you first start out, it allows you to understand that these are not just another form of cognitive overhead. It's a way of looking at the way that you're building and seeing the opportunities to do really good work. So it allows you to have a process in place as you start to burn down those error rates or you go into an incident to one, be able to risk manage when you have a major incident and simply implement an automated or semi-automated statement of process. And then you also want to have at either quarterly or monthly a time-locked way of reviewing all of these incidents or the velocity of the burn rates of your error budgets and look at system level insights that you can have to think about your architecture and your business value as being totally aligned and the Venn diagram of those being your SLOs. 
Now, I've made this big because it really matters. Culturally speaking, error budgets and error budget blowouts are good. They're okay. Services are highly dependent on not only your own microservices, but those external to yours. There's going to be maintenance. There's going to be outages. There's going to be updates that you were not aware of from other systems that can impact your availability to your users. The point in SRE is not to never fail, it's just to fail in a measurable way. Because when you do that, you're able to now communicate the big picture and you're able to ask your team if the SLIs and the SLOs, particularly the SLOs that you have, are still valid after a fixed period of time. Are there places in your architecture where you're seeing your error budget blow out? Should you now then see that there is a real impact on customers when that happens? If there's not, you can consider relaxing that SLO, putting less of your developer time and attention on the problems that don't impact your users and shifting it to the ones that really do. Now, as developers, this allows us to bring our focus and our attention not just to developing new features, but also on working on the prevention or cure of system instabilities that traditionally and in DevOps have caused a lot of toil around production. And you can do this in a reactive or a proactive way. Reactive is something that a lot of those who have already put SRE into place understand. Essentially, it means that when there is an incident, this can either be defined by some automated alert or oftentimes just by having a large amount of users reporting an issue. At that time, you'll go through a series of processes that you internally in your organization can define. I'm gonna focus just briefly on the criticality analysis where you understand what exactly is the customer impact and the severity analysis, how many customers were impacted. These are two things that are very important because they have a real and immediate impact on the viability of your business structure. When we talk about downtime at these error budgets, it's not just an abstract concept. It ties directly to your business impact. If you're a small company, on average, every single minute of downtime is costing you about 400 to 500 US dollars on, on average. If you're in a large organization, this could be hundreds or millions of dollars. If you're a financial institution, there can be legal and uh, severe repercussions to having less than optimal availability. You do want to be reactive and you do want to make sure that you handle incidents when they are occurring in real time. But as SRE becomes more advanced and as we begin to broaden this as a field with tooling and an understanding of how automation and monitoring can be used, you can start to automate some aspects of this full process. I'd encourage you to think about defining and automating your alert parameters, severity, threshold, frequency. Automate the way that you delegate some of the alerting to recipients, not only internally to your organization, but your stakeholders and your users as well. And to initiate the standard operating procedure with some level of automation fully in place, making sure that when you hit those those moments where those incidents are really putting you into a panic, that your team is able to reduce the cognitive load that they have to take on in order to address that problem and solve it. So if at this stage in the talk, you're asking the question, great, so why isn't my team doing SRE already? I, uh, I hope that you understand it's possible someone already is. I would look for the people in your system who are already acting possibly as those embedded SREs. You'll tend to find them in your DevOps teams. If you are looking to be that person yourself, I think that that's, a, that's not just a goal that you can have in mind for your career, but fundamentally it makes your job easier when you're building systems that are more stable. Um, look for the tooling and look for the processes that let your job be focused around what's highest value. And so in the future, if we see that, you know, this 41% seeing SRE and DevOps as being part of the same team, I hope that you can see that for yourselves as well and that you allow that to be the case on your organizational teams. Allow the problem observance and the problem solving to be centered in the same places at the same time and with the same people. 
And hopefully, I'd love to see by this time next year to see this doubled. You can use a telemetry tool of your choice. You can use some operational and reporting principles of your choice. But very simply, sitting down as an organization and deciding what indicators, what objectives, and what error budgets you're going to choose to have in place, and how often you're going to update those to align to business value is going to fundamentally change your development culture. Because error budgets demonstrably balance the system stability with new development while keeping user experience as the definition of good. Now, this for me is what allows for truly great dev culture, because great dev culture is when trust comes from quantified transparency in distributed system. That's a type of transparency that you can only get through doing site reliability engineering and error budgets in place. Great dev culture keeps user experience as the definition of good because that allows everyone at any level in the business to understand the bottom line of what and why we come to work every day to improve these systems. It allows us to have a shared and external to the organization understanding of what that good is that's absolutely understandable and measurable from the user's experience. And we always want to explain in great dove culture the not only what but the why of what we're spending our time on. We wanna know when we're deciding to do accelerated feature development or stepping back to harden some of the features that we've already built out. And that is the magic of SRE. It's not just another form of automation or monitoring. It's definitely not just having these magicians of engineers that can come in and solve your systems because of their fantastic understanding, although it often is. It can also just be a verb. You can start doing SRE in your workplace today and see if that starts to really shift you from a culture of doing incident management to being able to shift to prevention and cure around the way that you can do even possibly pre-incident reporting by looking at ways that your system could potentially fail by using things like chaos engineering and reliability testing, and then to start working on those systems ahead of when your users might be grumbling about it. So this was a whirlwind of a tour. I tried to keep it pretty high level. I'd really like to thank SLO Conf and everybody who's helped to put this together. I know there's a lot of great talks at this conference where you can get a couple more in-depth resources. I'd also like to thank my whole team at Reliably. We focus on some open source tools that are available in this area. But if you wanna have a better understanding just broadly of the tools, the concepts and the practices of SRE, uh, you're welcome to go to reliably.com slash resources, and I'll particularly point you to events uh, because I do give several talks around this where we go into more depth on a few of these topics, and I would love to help you on your journey and your digital transformation. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you have a wonderful day. I, uh, I hope that your error budgets aren't burning too fast and, uh, and that your systems are running well. Have a good one.